Hi, this is Ask Dr. Anna, and we're going to talk about post-traumatic growth and recovery. I think it's really helpful to understand what is happening inside of your body to better get a sense of really what's going on when you're exposed to stress. Because one of the things that I hear from people is they recognize that there are these hormones that get released when we're stressed, but they don't fully understand how important they really are. So somebody asked me recently, what's adrenaline and cortisol really? And what do they have to do with stress or trauma? So this is a great, great and very useful question because these are two different hormones that help you respond really quickly to dangerous situations and they help your body use all the resources to get you out of harm's way, your mind as well. They, they keep you feeling stressed long after the danger has passed. You can feel bad and out of control and really it's happening on a completely unconscious level. It's not like you're choosing for these hormones to be released. And in fact, it's really fantastic that they are released because we need them to help us every single day deal with the demands of our life and get through it as safely as possible. I want you to understand how this really operates. There's a lot involved, both in terms of other neurotransmitters, hormones, what happens in the body, and the, the cascade of events that follow the release of adrenaline and cortisol. These are two key hormones that are released whenever you're feeling stressed, to prepare your body and your mind to deal with emergency situations. Now, epinephrine is actually the scientific or the official name of that hormone called adrenaline. It's actually both a hormone and a neurotransmitter, and it gets released from the adrenal glands, and more specifically, the adrenal medulla, which lives just above the kidneys. Adrenaline actually acts as a neurotransmitter as well, and that's really the um, transmission system so that it carries impulses to the neurons to prepare them to get ready for fight or flight. Adrenaline works like gasoline on a fire. A big burst and a flash for energy and transport and then it burns out. It helps you run away. You need adrenaline to help you when you're in danger. Now, cortisol is also released, but it's like dense wood. It catches slowly and it burns, it begins to burn slowly and it actually keeps the fire of stress continuing to burn quickly. So whether you're exposed to a real threat or you've just remembered something terrible that happened or you're afraid that something awful might happen, you can experience a huge dump of adrenaline and cortisol that prepares your body for action. Your heart begins to rest, race, you sweat, your breathing becomes shallow and rapid, and you become highly aware of absolutely everything in your surroundings. Years ago, I used to go to um, banks after robberies, and I would go in and do diffusings and debriefings, and I could remember the vivid memories, the very detailed moments that were described to me after robberies. One bank teller told me that she could see the robber's dark glasses and the way his thumb was sitting on top of the gun and the look of the metal on the gun. As she described how the robber shifted from foot to foot and she kept saying, I will never forget those sunglasses. Now this is the effect of adrenaline. So what's happening is the mind has become super sharp. And then the memory gets embedded in a very profound way. And this causes some very noteworthy problems with intrusive memories and fearful events, months and even years after a trauma. Images, sounds, and even smells can re-trigger a full stress response with all the hormones racing through the body along with the full bang impact. So for this woman, this teller, after the bank robbery, she might get re-triggered to the full feelings in her body just by walking past the, the branch, a branch, branch anywhere. Now, if you're being chased by a lion 
and you desperately need to escape, you want this to happen. You want to know any subtle reminders of a lion stalking you from a distance, maybe even very far away. You want that fight or flight response because it is a lifesaver from an evolutionary perspective. So the brain, it actually, it's helping you take snapshots of dangerous things with exact detail and strong emotional surges embedded. Get it? But you don't live in the jungle surrounded by lions and this old mechanism, wiring and hormonal system, tends to wear you out, leaving us city dwellers feeling exhausted. The big problem with our way our hormones in our mind and our body work in connection is that, let's say our bank teller walks past a bank or sees a man with a certain pair of glasses and she is so massively stressed, even though there's absolutely no danger. In our modern world, we just can't get away from daily stressors. It, we're just bombarded by it every day. Maybe you've deleted all your emails by accident or you're dealing with a difficult boss or you're driving in terrible traffic or you're just having to deal with loud noises that are sudden and upsetting. It, it can just lead to an another adrenaline uh, surge and a cortisol release. And I want you to know that the dump of adrenaline, remember like the gas on the fire, can actually leave you feeling terrific, fantastic, great, sharp, powerful, in control, clear. Well, that can feel really good for a while, but the problem is, is that it, it then starts to deplete and cortisol starts to come up. If your life is filled with stressors daily, weekly, and monthly, the body and the mind simply don't have a chance to settle down. Unless you're working on some kind of practice that can reset or resettle your nervous system, the more frequently you have an adrenaline release, the more your cortisol levels rise in general, making it even more difficult to relax over time because now you have a surplus of cortisol, which keeps you in a state of strain, more reactive to lower level events. Every little thing can make you feel out of control. Now you feel the effects of cortisol more and more, and that leaves you actually kind of feeling sad, anxious, and kind of plagued with really bad thoughts. And at this stage, you're actually starting to downgrade on the stress reaction. So despite the fact that you should be feeling better, or at least hope you're feeling better, you're starting to feel more depressed. Now, I want you to understand that is normal, and I want you to see it as normal. It's your body starting to feel more relaxed, and along, comes with, along with this will, will come a, a sense of your body needing to rest. So it goes into a depressed state. This can be really confusing. The adrenaline rush makes you feel great, strong, and then you start coming down. It's like you're crashing from a high. The tough thing I want you to educate yourself about is that the more chronic this adrenaline and cortisol release is, the more severe the feelings of depression can be. Let's recap. Adrenaline is also known as epinephrine and it's a hormone or neurotransmitter and it's located right on the adrenal gland and that results in a big surge to prepare you for fight or flight. Cortisol is the uh, slow and steady hormone that keeps you activated long after stress has gone. The more chronic your exposure or reaction to stress, the higher your levels of cortisol in your body become overall and the more difficult it is for you to relax. Once you start to downgrade from stress, you feel quite sad, negative, and depleted. That's normal. Let it run its course without seeking out another stress bump that would reactivate everything and put you on a stress treadmill that's hard to get off. In order to break the cycle, you need some kind of restorative practice that can settle the stress steadily over time. And this only really works with regular practices. So commit to yourself and practice. Hope these videos are helpful for you. If you wanna share, like, Spread the word about this work. We would be so happy as we want these videos to help as many people as possible.